He reacts and lets go. That hook just goes <laughs> clink, just hooks him in the head and it bounces off. And I'm looking at him like, are you good? And then blood was just like psh, 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 squirting out of his head. And I'm like, and so I go running into the house. I go, mom, <laughs> it's like, Freddie has blood squirting out of his head. And she's like, what? <laughs> Welcome to Dad's Talk Film, the show where we take clips from a new movie every episode and talk about how it relates to life, relationships, family, and whatever else comes to mind. This episode, we're going to be doing Grown Up, starring Adam Sandler. But before we get to that, as always, pushing it over to Sean Marcus to see the Ryan Reynolds update. Uh, we still don't have Ryan on the line. You know you want to be on the show. We're getting tired of having to ask you. But I mean, we're going to keep doing it until you come on the show. But let's do the world a favor. Come on. Reach us at dadstalkfilm at gmail.com. Let us know you're ready to come on. But uh, yeah, so Ryan Reynolds come on the show. And we're going to talk about grown-ups right now. So mm -hmm. grown-up things for grown-up people. That's why you're here. Yeah. I think. But grown-ups is... A film about grown-ups. That's it. No, it's about uh, old childhood friends had a basketball team that they became the champions. They were the championship game for this coach. And that was like the, their big moment in life and the big moment for this coach. And then they go years down the road. All of them have graduated and moved on in life and have their own lives doing various different things and all that. But the coach ends up passing away and they get noticed that, you know, they're offered to come to the funeral. And so they do. And in the will, for some reason, this coach wanted them to be the ones to spread the ashes. I think it was because they were the only championship team that he ever had yeah and he's like screw family and friends that coach that team that i coached in middle <laughs> school that's right? who i want to spread my ass yeah the, those kids that i haven't talked to since then <laughs> are the important ones because i don't think they ever did go back and talk to them <laughs> so weird premise but they go to the funeral and then rent a cabin for all of the families to come together because every one of them has kids except for david spade's character he's kind of like that one guy who's just always single and just living life up so that's that's the premise yeah kids family and everybody goes to this cabin and unless i miss something no nah, i think you got it all down <laughs> just adults hanging out and learning new things about their kids and different and where they went in life and um yeah <laughs> so that's, that's a great segue that, that, that's the episode see you guys next time <laughs> bye <laughs> that was our we shortest one yet <laughs> three minutes i know it's six minutes of it we have either me the waiting for Sean episodes Marcus. or we have the three minute episodes <laughs> <laughs> no but the movie basically is showcasing kind of the 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 friendship between these old friends and the how they are different from their kids now so kids now playing video games and mm -hmm. all that and they don't quite understand it they're a little bit more spoiled in life and this cabin is really uncomfortable for all the kids because they don't have all their fancy luxuries in life especially adam sandler's kids they are the hollywood family so hollywood yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I think we touched on it last episode with with Stand by Me that kids are too reliant on their phones and video games and just aren't getting out there. And they kind of touched on it when Adam Sandler's character spotted his son out kind of by the lake, and he picked up a rock and he's like, "All right, all right, now skip it or throw it at a tree or throw it at your brother. Like, do something with it. Like, be a kid." And then he just kind of throws it back down on the ground. It's like, ah, oh, disappointment. <laughs> yeah. And I know we talked about it before, but we're going to talk about it again, which is 
man, do kids even get out and go do any fun things anymore? And this is kind of what the premise of the movie is, is kids not understanding what to do when you're just out in nature or out doing something without technology. Like they go out and they see the rope on a, uh, the rope swing on a tree. There's a rope dangling from the tree. All the kids don't know what to do with it. And they're like, you don't get excited when you see a rope hanging from a a tree over a lake. And I love this aspect of the movie too, is they're all older adults now and they all have that childhood drive still in them when they see that stuff, but they're older. So they want to show off and think they can still do it. So you got, uh kevin swinging i don't know any of the guys names in this movie besides their real names so yeah go with kevin kevin james swings on the rope swing but doesn't let go and comes back and just like falls in uh down the hill and crushes a bird (laughs) but just all those fun little moments so my friends and i i lived in montana for like from fifth grade to uh 10th grade and Every summer, I try to go back to the lake and hang out with my friends. And now that I'm married, I'm bringing back, you know, Stacy and the boys. And they actually really enjoy it. And it's nice to have something that teenage boys enjoy doing. But, you know, my friends live on the lake and we go water skiing and tubing and, you know, wakeboarding and all that stuff. But Mm -hmm. there is a rope swing and there is a cliff jump area. And like you said, you know, you've got that childhood drive still and then you know i climb up to that platform on the rock and it's probably about 30 feet up and then you get up there and you're like oh that's pretty high (laughs) (laughs) you don't quite have the the balls that you did when you were a kid but man i still did it but it, it takes a little it takes a little longer to talk up that courage to do it i don't know i think we all have that I don't know. I always tell Diana, I think I stopped growing up at 15 or something because because I always want to do all those crazy fun things. But, you know, like you said, as an adult, you also weigh out, "Mm, is this going to hurt? But you still want to do it. You still think you're young. I mean, I'm only 36, but, you know, definitely different than being 15. Yeah. So. But I haven't done it now since I've had my own kid. And years back when I was out there, we were jumping off of maybe like an eight foot rock. And one of my friends, Clay, who was a Navy SEAL, (laughs) by the way, was standing on that rock and he was like hesitant to jump off. I'm like, come on, it's like eight feet, you know? And he's like, yeah, but as soon as you've had a kid, something switches in your brain and you don't want to risk things anymore. Even though it's just eight feet, it's like, well, maybe there's a rock underneath that water or something and it just switches. So I'm interesting. It's, it'll be interesting now that I have Sebastian if I'm not going to be doing those things anymore. We'll see. Uh, I, can, I can tell you already that that mode has clicked into my head. I mean, I still go out and ride my one wheel. I still ride uh, my EUC and do all that kind of crazy stuff. But I was going to do a project before doing dad's talk film and that was going to be called adventure squad and that was going to be us just going out trying new things every month and recording it and just like i went skydiving that was part of it so which was an awesome experience and i think people should do it because i don't know i'm not afraid of heights so it was just a exhilarating awesome adrenaline filled experience that i would love to do again But then we wanted to get into bungee jumping. All the things we were talking about was like more extreme. So whitewater rafting and all that stuff. But once we found out Diana was pregnant, I kind of shifted modes. I go, man, I don't know if I should be jumping out of planes and doing all this stuff. How about instead of adventure squad, we do cupcake squad and we go taste (laughs) cupcakes. (laughs) Right? Man, you're all about the sweets, man. You bought up brownies or something before your love language, yeah. language, language, language. <laughs> I like the sweets. What can I, I had a slice of nothing bunt cake earlier between, you know, our episodes. Not that we film several episodes in one day. We don't do that. These are done the day before <laughs> they come out. Yeah. I think there is something that switches in your head. At least it did for me already, which... You know, I want to be able to go do all that stuff, but I yeah. also want to be alive and 
be, see my kid grow up because I yeah. think that's a cool, unique ex- life experience in itself. And I don't want to miss out on that. And I want to be able to be there. Well, you can still go skydiving if you do the um, wind tunnel stuff. Have you ever done that? Yeah, I did the wind tunnel thing years ago. Diana and I actually did that. And it doesn't feel anything like skydiving. Well, I think it's just <laughs> I think it's just the rush of jumping to uh, death. But other than that, I I feel like it feels exactly the same. Have you done both? Yeah, I've done both. Really? Yeah. Okay. Didn't feel exactly the same to me at all. Yeah. Indoor one just is just air blowing up on you. You don't get the falling sensation. At least I didn't when I went in the indoor one. I think the falling sensation is just your adrenaline of, you know, jumping out of a plane and, and maybe you get that little bit of a, but like, once the air is, you know, you're, yeah, I feel like it's the same. Yeah. It's super cool and super surreal. So yeah. it was, it was a ton of fun. So kind of wish I could go do all that stuff. I mean, I could, but let me enjoy my kid a little bit before I go and die. <laughs> <laughs> you're uh, like, all right, you've been alive for a month now. I'm going to go skydiving again. <laughs> actually, man, the, the funny thing about the skydiving thing is I went with my buddy, Steve, and we paid for the packages where we got, you know, the GoPro on your hand mm-hmm. and then the other jumper to record you. So the the other jumper records you and does all the stuff. And then he heads off. I think he heads off before you or after. Either way, he splits off from you eventually. Well, they sent us all the footage and we checked out his footage and his his shoot got tangled up. In it, it was all twisted, and he's like trying to pull it apart. And oh shit! I remember when we landed; it didn't cross my mind because we we're just so adrenaline filled and pumped, like "Oh, that was so awesome! Let's do it again!" <laughs> type thing. And uh, after I saw that video, I remembered him saying, "I thought I was going to have to cut it." So when we saw the video, I was like, "Oh, that's what he was talking about." He thought he was going to have to cut his shoot and let the other one go. It didn't scare me from wanting to go skydiving again. Yeah. But I haven't done it again, but I totally would. But yeah, it was kind of crazy that they didn't say, we probably should cut that out of our footage <laughs> before giving it to our clients or paying customers. <laughs> when I went, um, we did, GoPros didn't exist. Like this was, I was, this was probably 98 that I went. Yeah, they had, they had someone that went up with you and, you know, they had the giant <laughs> camera on the helmet, you know, and then they transferred it to a VHS tape. <laughs> Kids, if you don't know what a VHS Dang. tape is, yeah. Right? So like, my skydiving video is on a VHS tape. <laughs> that's cool, though. Yeah. Nice and grainy. Got to get that tracking button. I know. Make sure it comes in clear. <laughs> Kids probably don't even know what a tracking button is anymore. No. Man. No. Dating ourselves. Kids missed out on a lot of cool things. A lot of cool technological advancements. I mean, <laughs> technology advances like crazy. But they need to put them away. That's the point of this yeah. movie. Just put the technology away. Go, go skydiving. Hang out in the cabin. Do crazy stuff. Do fun stuff. Go build stuff, a ramp. Buddy. Yeah. Go break a leg. Yeah. But, you know, the, they talk about this is like their big moment, their championship games. Do you have any? Uh, oh, I played all of zero moment? sports, basically. No, I mean, it doesn't have to be sports. But oh. do you have a moment in your life that was like the moment you think about, like the Al Bundy <laughs> Uh, four <laughs> touchdowns or four touchdowns in a single match thing. Do you have a moment like that? It doesn't have to be sports related. It could be anything. Man, I'm kind of on the spot. No, I don't. Well, I don't I'm, remember. I'm going to tell you mine. From my childhood. No, we don't want to hear yours. <laughs> I was I uh, the segue was the only reason I'm asking you this is because I want to talk about my four. It's all about you, isn't it? (laughs) No, but while you're thinking about it, I'm going to tell you mine, which is I was in a death metal band Mm -hmm. for a while and I I was in my 20s and all that. But it was always a goal of mine to be a musician and go play shows and all that. But that's kind of like my glory moment is is playing shows at venues that I watched a lot of these other death metal bands play at and just being a musician on stage and performing for people. That's my, my glory moment. I still have my shirts that are all ragged from when we had our band and I still wear them and I have hoodies and stuff. It's just kind of my Al Bundy moment. What was the, what was the name of the band? A city screams in terror. We put out one. Yeah. We put out one album called beginnings and I believe it has 10 tracks on it. I'm super proud of it. I recorded it. 
with the whole band? Or? Can we get a little sample here for the audience? Oh, man, we can. What should we put in there? I'm going to go with either I'm gonna go with House Pets or Dead and Frightened. I don't know. House, one of those pet, house Pet just sounds like a great yeah. song. I want to hear that one. Man, I loved playing House Pet uh, live. We'd open up with that one because you just kind of start off just like super shreddy and it was super shreddy, super ch uh, like chunky and stuff. It was just fun. And uh, I think we need a picture. Do you have a, a long haired hair whip photo? I have I have videos and uh, some good pictures. Yeah. I think videos are a little bit sparse. Ooh. I might be able to find something, but definitely have some some pictures of me with long hair. If you guys believe it, I had long hair that went down to my lower back. I could actually reach back and grab it. <laughs> so not like this now. <laughs> so just making my uh, my Thor transition from the other Thors to Ragnarok. That's how I did it here. So. Did I spark any memories in your mind about your moments? Or you just, you're like, oh, I don't have moments like that because I don't dwell on the past. I don't know. I mean, it's like I was too busy picturing you with long hair shredding a guitar and, you know, screaming. Wait, no, you didn't sing. That's right. You said before no, you couldn't sing. I know sing, my so. limits. Yeah. I know my limits. Even though it wasn't a singing band, it's all death metal, growly vocals. <laughs> Fun fact. <laughs> I do that. I do a death growl when I do my fun fact. <laughs> mm -hmm. You do. You get a nice, yeah. nice little growl in there. Yeah. But no, I, I don't, uh, I can't think of, I mean, I had a lot of fun memories as a kid and through college and high school and all that. But like, I don't know. I don't really have a glory day kind of a. Yeah, I always felt bad for, for yeah, I always felt bad for those guys who constantly just relive their high school days because if that was like your peak, like I feel bad. Like the I, uncle from Napoleon yeah. Dynamite? <laughs> uncle <clears throat> Uncle Rico. Just, mm, oh, I just hit my camera. Mm, just throwing him <laughs> at the camera. Yeah. Back in high school, I could have thrown this football crew over that mountain. Yeah. <laughs> 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 But that movie also has a super sweet bike jump scene. Yeah. So get out on your bikes. <laughs> Build so, that ramp. <laughs> I mean, I have childhood memories from going camping. And we used to go to one of my dad's friend's property. And there'd be a bunch of kids there. We'd have huge bonfires and stuff. And I remember we would go out and we would go grab trees, like big logs that were already knocked over and we were dragging them down and we built a little cabin, like a Lincoln log type cabin. And then we realized we didn't have a way to make a door on it because it was shorter than us. It probably came up to like here on us. So you'd have to duck to get into it anyway. But we had a roof all built on it, which was just Lincoln log typed all the way across the top. We didn't have any notches out, anything to really protect it, but it, had four sides. And then we realized, oh, we need to dig a hole in the ground to be able to even get in this thing. So we did that. And then we wanted to stay the night in it, but our parents wouldn't let us, which was probably for the best because that thing, probably the wind probably would have blown it over. It'd be like, this is the scene in Enemy Mine where he's like, yeah, it's sturdy as a rock. <laughs> Boom, just collapses over. But uh, I think it was actually there years later. Yeah. So. Well, well, just fun childhood memories. Like I that. mean, I guess glory days would probably be college. Um, I mean, we would throw just insane bonkers parties in college, like from the dorms. I mean, we were in a little cluster, but like we would have like lights going. You could see them across the 520 bridge when people were coming over. Like, that's what we're going or like. Mm -hmm. You know, we'd have blacklight parties. We'd pass out highlighters and you'd just draw all over. And the, I mean, it was, they were so good that the fraternities would exaggerate how great our parties were. They're like, oh, you got to go to this house party. There's like 18 <laughs> kegs and all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I was like, that's, that's my house that you're talking about. And there's only three, but like, whatever, believe what you want. 
And man, they, they were just good times, you know. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any like childhood memory that you did with friends that maybe was stupid that <laughs> all of them? Hurt? <laughs> I mean, there were so many dumb things that we would do. There was one where it wasn't dumb, but it was like one of those that would change the trajectory of your life forever. Um, it was actually, I was in college, I was a sophomore, and I was actually dating a senior in high school. Um, I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so I went to the senior prom. And so we were all going to go up to these hot springs here outside of Seattle. And so you had to drive up this mountain road, cross this stream and go hiking up to this thing. Well, the stream, it was springtime. So it was like glacial melts. It was, it was flowing and we had to carry our backpacks over our heads and it was about waist deep. Well, one of the girls slipped and she was holding onto like a fallen tree, like the, the roots coming out. And she was holding on to mm -hmm. that and she slipped and the water started pushing her under the fallen log. So Ooh. if you know, like, so it's like this, she would have been swept under and pinned under that log and she would have drowned because there's no way we would have gotten her out. It Man. took us 30 minutes to undo the backpack and pull her out from the rapids. Now, just thinking back, I mean, that would have, definitely changed everybody's life if she had died that day so yeah. man well i'm glad you guys were able to get her out of that yeah my, my buddy kind of had a similar thing but it was not as intense as yours at all but we were i was out with him and his family and we were at some river it's out in the seattle area somewhere i don't remember where we're at but you know it's around that area and i remember his mom told him don't get too close to the river it'll like sweep you out because you were like a little bit in water mm -hmm. but then there's like the stream just like going down well what does he do he gets as close as he can and then slips out in there and you just i just seen him his arms are out he's like <laughs> oh like going and man actually like his sister who's actually sarah she she was the first one to guess on some framed episodes ago she but gets Sarah, mentioned twice now wow look at her she does like <laughs> this is like way down the line but she whips around and just hooks and grabs his hand because he had his arm out and pulled him right back in he was so lucky man because i don't know it probably would have got rough down there and yeah those you know, would have been a life-changing thing for him too river rapids kill all the time you know what actually kills most people with rivers um a friend of mine who's a river rapids water rafting guide told me if you're floating down a river don't ever put your feet down because the water will push you and then lodge your feet under a rock and then the force of the water will break your knees and then pin you down and you'll not be able to get back up and that's how most people drown Dang. so are you supposed to just like so just float, float on your back or float just, forward? just float and keep your legs up and keep floating down the river don't ever put okay. them down so you kind of want to back float your yeah. way if you can and try yeah. to slowly, like try to swim your way at an angle, I would assume. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Look at this. We're giving out survival I tips know. up in here. Yeah. Dang. It's probably like the first. How to build tip. a Lincoln log fort, how to survive river rapids. Man, yeah. if you get lost down the woods, you, you're going to be good. I know. You don't know how to make a fire or purify water, but that's for another time. <laughs> Go watch Bear Grylls. I don't know. Yeah. Watch Alone. <laughs> That's the best show right there. Alone. Oh, yeah. Those, yeah. those ones are good. Yeah. I have some stupid stuff, though, uh, on the lines. Because in the movie, they have this childhood game that they would do. And they would go They'd go get this arrow. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and what they do, shoot the arrow straight up into the air. And the last person to stay standing there wins. <laughs> And you got to hope that you just don't get hit. But, you know, so they do this as adults. They just, bah, and then all of them are running. <laughs> yeah, of course, one of them gets an arrow right through the foot and all that. But that made me think of a childhood memory that me and Freddie, again, the, the kid that almost got swept away in the river. <laughs> we made good choices when we were kids. 
Uh, he was my childhood best friend. But we had this bamboo stick that we would do and we would uh, huck it at each other. And we would, and then we would catch it and then like do some trick with it. Bah, 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 bah. And then we would whip it back at the other person again. And it's like spinning. Like it's come flying at us and we'd throw it all kinds of different ways. And his dad came out and was so mad. He's like, stop throwing those stick at each other. You're going to hurt each other. And we were throwing it at each other like a spear and stuff and, you know, catch it and do the cool tricks. And so he said, stop throwing it like a spear at each other and you're going to hurt each other. He got mad. So we came up with the idea of, well, he said not to throw it at each other like a spear. So what if we just, ha! Huck it up into the sky. And so it would go flying up and then come way down. And then we then we would catch it and do our fancy little ninja turtle tricks and stuff. So I huck this this spear up into the sky. And it's got a blunt edge to it. But my buddy, for some reason, went like this. <laughs> and caught it right in the forehead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he was thinking, but he just dropped to the ground and I'm just dying laughing because it was it's still funny to me to this day. I don't know what, what he was thinking, but I get over there to go check on him as I'm just cracking up as you do as a kid. And, and he had this huge bump on his head that instantly came and he had long hair. So he tried to cover it up. Oh, it's like in the, like off to the side, like in the middle. So he had like this hair, like covering like this to try to hide it from his parents. Yeah. We stopped throwing the stick, went into the room. And then eventually we came back out and told his parents, cause that bump was going to be way <laughs> too hard to hide. And his mom was a nurse. So she got all mad. She's like, you could have been internally bleeding and, and all this stuff, man. Yeah. So we used to do stupid stuff. That's when I watched the movie though, the arrow in the, in the sky thing made me think about that. And then all the other stupid little things, Freddie and I used to do like we used to have in my backyard, there was a rock wall thing that my dad built. Well, I got the idea to jump off of it with my eyes closed. So I did it and I landed fine. And then my buddy Freddie closed his eyes, jumped off, jumped too early and then just blasted his face all the way down the rocks. He comes up his hands on the rock and he's all bloody and <laughs> stuff, and stuff like that. Poor kid, dude. He had like scabs all over his face. <laughs> Along that line in college, there was this parking garage in the dorms, one of the dorms, and there was a, a retaining wall kind of all the way around. Instead of windows, you could see, you know, out through the parking garage, like most parking garages that are. Well, over the retaining wall, there was an embankment that came up all the way to almost the wall. So... Before I would go just jumping over and run down the hill and like go to, you know, another part of campus, it was like a little shortcut. So I knew about that. And when we were walking through there with my friends, I'm like, watch this, uh, you know, I'm going to jump off this wall. And I jumped, but I happened to jump at the wrong spot. And I looked down and it was just like parking <laughs> garage levels down below. And I'm like, oh, oh. shit. So I like uh -huh. turned around in the air and I grabbed that concrete wall. And it was like a oh, cartoon man. where like my fingers just like slid off and then like poof, and then I just mm. fell down like a, a whole floor flight down below and landed on my ass. <laughs> man. Yeah. Hey, man, do kids do that stuff anymore? Get hurt like all that and have all the good memories that we're talking about now? I hope so. <laughs> right. One more thing. Same kid, Freddie. <laughs> I hung out with him. I hung out with him every day. He was like my best friend growing up. And. I had a rope that had this hook on it and it's a metal hook. Again, it had a blunt edge to it, but what we'd do is we'd whip that thing around and hook it onto trees and try to climb on it uh -huh. and stuff. So never got hurt from doing anything like that. That was all fine. But we had this like play set with monkey bars on it. And so we whipped that thing over it. And then my brother's hanging onto the hook end and my friend Freddie's pulling on the rope, kind of lifting them up with it. Well, you get so high, your fingers got hit. My brother's fingers got smashed on the monkey bar. So, of course, he reacts and lets go. That hook just goes <laughs> clink, just hooks him in the head and it bounces off. And I'm looking at him like, Are you good? And then blood was just like psh, 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 squirting out of his head. And I'm like, and so I go running into the house. I go, mom, <laughs> it's like Freddie has blood squirting out of his head. And she's like, what? <laughs> so we had to call, you know, his parents again. And. Man, I don't know why he always come over and hung out with us. He got hurt so many times. 
At least for good stories. Though. Yeah. Good memories. Yeah. If but, you're not out getting hurt, you know, are you even actually living? Right. I mean, we all got hurt and we survived. I think uh, kids are getting babied now and I uh, can't go do anything fun. Yeah. Maybe it's our generations just ruining childhood because we got hurt and we're worried that everyone else can get hurt. I think it's funny when kids get hurt. It's part of growing up. I mean, yeah, I kind of need to hopefully get serious. Like, am I going to be <laughs> like with Sebastian when he gets older? Like, yeah, run around, you know, do whatever, play with everything that I played with as a kid. Or am I going to be like, I don't know. I got hurt a lot. <laughs> like I bled a lot. <laughs> Yeah. But you're alive and you have, yeah. you have fun. Yeah. But man, I don't, I don't know, know how many how many times I like wrecked on my bike or like got hit by a car biking and like never wore a helmet. But now Ooh. it's like, no, wear a helmet. You mm-hmm. better wear a helmet. <laughs> One thing that I really enjoy in this is all of the adults and stuff are just hanging out, getting drunk and just talking and bullshitting and just having fun and deep conversations and kind of just ragging on each other because they're all that good of friends that they can just make fun of each other no one's really getting too offended and if somebody does get offended it really doesn't matter but it's just fun david spade's character falls asleep and then they like tell him all these like weird little stories and carry him into the the closet and all that so they're just having a good time as adults remembering fun memories and just doing the goofy stuff to each other. And I don't know. I just love that. I love having friends over. I love when we throw Halloween parties and just to be able to hang out, drink and have like cool conversations. Yeah. And I I think if you can't make fun of your friends, like that is all my friends and I do is just tear each other down. And I mean, it's, it's all in good yeah. heartedness. It's not like you're trying to make the person hate themselves or anything. And yeah. If somebody got too hurt about it, you'd be there to help them out. You know? I mean, it's like um, some friends of mine who are a couple, they're married and like they just tear each other down all the time and they just and now they're divorced. And, I mean, <laughs> Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively. I mean, look at their tweets. All they oh, do yeah. is make fun of each other. Yeah. It's all yeah. in good humor. Yeah. It's what builds you stronger and makes you. Mm-hmm. But what I love about too about it is they kind of force the kids to get rid of the technology and say, you're just going to enjoy the weekend or that we're having here and figure it out. But you get to kind of see the kids start having fun. They're skipping stones and, and all that. But they're also, building the telephone. Pa- yeah. Except for it, it was driving me nuts. I, I hated it though. Cause like this, they're, just talking into the cup and the strings all loose and stuff like that's not how those work. You have to have yeah. it super tight. <laughs> mm-hmm. That one going uh, to the grandma's yeah. butt cheeks was pretty tight though. <laughs> She's just ripping them through the phone. <laughs> what about her tight butt? <laughs> yeah. But then too, the, the movie goes into just talking about how we got to make sure we're communicating with our spouses and people properly and, Uh, remember to have things like date night and we get all caught up into the busyness of life and sometimes i think we need to take those moments to where we can just unplug and enjoy each other and that's what i've been enjoying part of the pregnancy process with diana is while it's uncomfortable for her she has restless legs but we go on we go on walks every night to kind of help that out but we leave our phones in the house and then we just go talk and we bring these little conversation cards that will just spark new conversations because we've been together for 10 years and you know, sometimes you run out of things to talk about or it's not as easy to talk about things. So the conversation cards help us out to learn new things about each other. And that's the thing is we can always learn more about our, our spouses, our friends. And so when, when your daughter's born, are you guys going to keep going on the date nights? Yeah. We were just talking about that last night. I was like, I want to make sure we still do date nights. We have them every Saturday. And we take turns who has to plan it. Uh, And then I want to make sure we still do these walks at night because they've been really connecting for us, especially in a busy world where you can kind of get consumed by work and just the daily things. I'm going to go to work and come home. Let's watch a movie, I guess. It's kind of nice to just have those moments to connect and have that quality time. 
So I'm I'm curious to see how how if you do keep it up every Saturday or if there's you know in the beginning you're like oh, I'm too tired let's just <laughs> let's just skip the walk today. <laughs> It'll be right? uh, interesting to see. I, I mean, I hope you keep it up. Are you gonna? Are you I gonna mean, bring her with, or are you gonna have a babysitter? Uh, or no, I think we will end up just. Uh, well, I don't know about date nights. What we're gonna do with all that yet? But the walks at night that'll be yeah. easy. We'll be able to just bring the baby along with yeah. the stroller and still have our conversations. I was just talking to Diana last night, saying I really want us to keep doing these walks even after her restless legs go away and after the baby's here because it's been something super healthy for our relationship honestly and we've probably never been closer because of these these moments of just getting rid of the phones don't have the iphone watch thing because then you're like tempted to look at it and it's just been something super awesome that we just got to make it a priority in, in our life. Cause you know, date nights might we get a little bit tough, but at least we're talking every night and we're maintaining that closeness and connection. The old lady in there in the, the film actually says some cool stuff at the end where she says that life gets bumpy and the first half is the exciting part, but the second half is where the depth comes in. And I can totally relate to that because it's, when diana and i were dating you know everything's super exciting you're going and doing all these fun things and exciting stuff because it's all new and then you're together for so long and like i said that's kind of where the depth and stuff starts coming in but now you have to feed that depth with conversation and making sure it's a priority yeah yeah making each other a priority carrying on conversation is is something that i think a lot of couples are lacking and I'll put it in the video here just for everyone else because it's been something really cool for us. But there's these cards that you can get on Amazon. They're like 20 bucks maybe. And there's like 100 cards or something like that in it. And they have different versions. There's couples ones. There's just general ones. There's, I don't know, a bunch of different subjects. But they're called table topics. And they just come in this little uh, square clear box. And we just take five out when we go on a walk and we'll just go through them. If, if conversation starts slowing down and uh, or we're running out ideas, it helps us just have a back and forth conversation. And that's the thing, too. Make sure it's a back and forth conversation. Don't just give a short, closed ended conversation. Make it open ended and really discuss. Give it a, a full effort. And maybe you guys just don't connect to that specific card. Move on to another card. But you get used to it and conversations just start flowing it's really exciting and, and cool so i'll put that up in the video for people yeah the more you you dive into conversations the more you're able to have them without you know having that that those cheat yeah cards. i think <laughs> yeah the cheat cards also make you kind of expand yeah. your thinking too because it's you probably topics you them. wouldn't t talk about otherwise yeah for yeah. sure yeah, and they're just they're just fun. And the couples yeah. ones you can learn a little bit more about each other. And then the general ones we bought both just so it wasn't always couples stuff because that can get a bit exhausting too. Because you're like, oh, now we got to talk about these super deep things. It's fun to have cards that are just goofy and yeah, off the wall stuff that you can debate or talk about. I always like those. They're not, I mean, in depth conversation stuff, but like. I always enjoyed the would you rather, you know, cars. Like, would you mm -hmm. rather have this or, you know, uh, uh, arm like an ice cream cone or, <laughs> or like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. that That's just kind of the movie to me. Like, just friends bullshitting, having a good time, reconnecting mm -hmm. with each other a little bit and getting rid of the technology. But then also exposing your kids to... Uh, other things, taking them to the water parks and then your kids teaching you that there's blue dye in the water that you can't pee in it and funny stuff. Like that. I think an important lesson of the movie is to show how different a group of friends can grow up to be like one, you know, a Hollywood agent and, you know, one stay at home father. Yeah. And, and each one is completely different than you were as kids, but you can still come together and be friends, even though your lives are drastically different, different, mm -hmm. you can still come together and, and bond 
and relive old times and have good laughs and conversations and and yeah yeah i mean i have some friends like like steven we haven't seen each other in a long time but anytime we see each other it's like it never ended you know we just pick up right where we're at and able to just you know hash it out and but it's just nice to have friends like that too where you can just pick up and go like no matter what life's been going on what's been going on in our lives or if you've been separated for a long time and coming back together i like the fact that most of my friends like we don't talk all the time you know we don't do texting all the time or phone calls or see each other all the time but when we do get together it's just like the last time we saw each other was two days before and yeah, we, we can just I mean. pick up right where we left off um, yeah and that's kind of what they do yeah that's just what i related to the most and this was just loving that camaraderie that they have even though they all have different lives and they're able to pick at each other and just go have a good time remember cool fun memories and then do fun things yeah. and relive that basketball game that everyone contests yeah one of the things that I, oh yeah that's the one thing i really did like too is adam sandler just throwing the game at the end yeah because this was like a, a moment that you know they held dear to them but it the opposite end for the other guys that lost thinking the game was not uh properly refed or counted that was a big part for them and him just throwing it to say here you can be your community hero yeah. and have this glory moment because you know it doesn't matter and then it gives uh, my kid a life lesson too that you don't need to win everything mm -hmm. you know but it, it was just a cool thing to you know just let that happen yeah giving them that feel good moment without you know oh i let you win kind of thing yeah so i don't know i enjoyed it i actually didn't remember it being as good as it was until i remember it being okay and then i watched it again maybe i just related more now and kind of thinking about becoming a, a parent and stuff and how that's going to affect my life and seeing them and knowing i want to get my kid into all the fun things and camping and you know just planning for the future but what yeah. would you rate this movie what's our rating scale on this what's oh, let's just do this what is your glider move uh-huh and then what is the score you get for your dismount? Okay. All right. So my glider move would be, can you go straight cannonball? I mean, this is about childhood and it's about reliving those childhood memories. <laughs> and what, uh -huh. what do you not do when you're in a pool, but cannonball? So I'm going to cannonball <laughs> it full splash. And uh, I'm going to get rated an 8.6 on my cannonball splash. Whoo, yeah. I am going to go old school, like I talked about before in the, in the Goonies Stand By Me episode. I had a glider when I was a kid, so I'm a professional at this. <laughs> but I'm going just standard two-handed grip, but I'm a, reefing myself into it. And I'm going to forget to let go and just plow into Cr that shit. Crash into the shed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm getting uh, like a 4.3 on my landing. But that's not necessarily what I think about the movie. That's just my <laughs> that's just my uh, my landing score. But I'm just going to keep it there. Yeah. That's, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but I enjoyed the movie. So I know it was a low score, but that's just yeah. because I have a terrible dismount there and I'm just hitting the wall like I did when I hit the tree when I was a kid. Yeah. I mean, it, it's definitely, it's an entertaining movie. It's got a great cast. It's got a, you know, a fun little message. Will it change your world? No, but it's, it's entertaining and it's got some good laughs in it and uh, it's worth a watch. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's it for this one. Just uh, hit up our social media as always. We got Instagram, Facebook. Make sure you hit up our YouTube if you're watching it here. Or if you're on our podcast, come over and watch us because we had all kinds of cool little pop-ups. Yeah, way more entertaining visually. <laughs> Yeah, and it's getting better every episode. <laughs> yeah. So so hit up all the things I just said, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye, Peace. everybody.